Hello, and this is the americantrademarkpictures.com website tutorial. Congratulations on getting your website up. In this tutorial, we are going to go through each component of the website and show you how to manage the website moving forward. So, first thing you want to do is bring up your browser and go to americantrademarkpictures.com. I typically like to have two tabs open, one showing the website, and the second tab will show the back end of the website where you will be making your changes. And that way, when you save your changes, you can always flip back and forth to see what kind of changes uh, how and how they reflect on the website. So to get to the back end of the website, you will essentially go to www.americantrademarkpictures.com forward slash wp dash admin and that's this part right here forward slash, forward slash wp dash and then admin and that will basically redirect to a login page uh, by this time you should receive the login credentials uh, if by any chance you forgot your login credentials you can always click on this lost your password you can enter in your username or email address and click on this get new password and it'll send you the new or send you a way to reset your password. So I'm going to pause the video for security purposes, put in my credentials, and we should see the main page of the uh, WordPress dashboard. So now that I'm logged in, this is the WordPress dashboard. From here, you have uh, the left-hand menu that allows you to navigate to certain parts of the website, certain components of the website that allow you to edit things. Um, so the first thing I want to go over is under user, uh, let's say uh, you want to change your password or give people access to your site or revoke people access to your site you'll do it under users I'm not going to click on that um, just for security purposes since this video can be be seen um, but if you wanted to manage access to your website you want to go to users click on all users and then you can see how many people have access to your site you can change passwords for them you can change your own passwords you can delete um, delete uh, accounts as well user accounts um, so the first thing I want to go over is I want to go over Pages. Pages is going to be the simplest part to edit. Um, pages will apply to the films page, or not the films page. I'm sorry, the films maker page. It'll allow you to edit this page here as well as each individual bio pages. So one for William McKay, um, as well as one for Grant McKay. And I believe, let me check the home page. Yes, and it, uh, and it also allow you to edit the home page, at least with the content here. So let's go to pages. On the left hand menu, I'm going to click on pages. And of course, your website has more than, than um, just these pages, but the other types of pages are not just regular pages, they're special types of pages. So for example, to production stills, even though it's a page, you don't edit through pages because it's a photo gallery. And the films, even though it's a page, it's not a regular page. It's a page that is comprised of different films. And each of the films then will open up to have their own dedicated detailed pages. But um, in general, for the home and filmmakers, there are traditional pages. So let's look at home first um, now these set these uh, sections here aren't going to be editable they're edited through a different component but under pages and under home you should be able to edit the featured film section so let's take a look so I'm looking at home under pages and in here I do see uh, featured film. So let's say I wanted to edit this part right here. You know, recognize the power of communication that lines up with this part right here. So let's say I wanted to edit the text a little bit. Um, I'll hover over this area here. I don't want to mess with the slider. I definitely don't want to mess with the portfolio. Um, those are done in different sections. 
but I do want to edit the featured film, uh, this part right here. So hover over it, and I'm going to click on this little pencil that allows me to edit the text block. And here you can see I can now edit and add more text as I want. And if I click on Save Changes here, and then I click on Update, so Save Changes saves the changes, and Update updates the page. If I click on Update Pages, and I refresh the the website on the front end, I should see the three words, three makeup words that I just added. Now, of course, I don't want that to stay, so I'm going to click on Edit again under Feature Film, and I am going to delete those texts, and then I'm going to click on Update. And once that's set, if I refresh the website, these three words are gone. Um, so under this Edit option, for the text, oops, I accidentally edit the, I uh, clicked on the pencil on Revolution Slider. I don't want to do that. I want it under the featured film. Click on that. It should be in green. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with the interface that WordPress provides. I could highlight a word. I could press bold to make it bold and, and also italicize if I wanted to. I can, um, you know, make it in quotes. I can create bullet point lists. Um, if I do the toolbar toggle, that gives me even more options. So let's say under here, I want to change the text colors. I can as well, or provide a special, or I can either you know choose a different color completely. Um, lots of options um, under. I think let's see. Let me try to find it. There should be a way for you to test uh, change the font, but I think for consistency, they turn that part off. That's fine. There's no need for you to add your own font types. Um, but in any case, um, the toolbar toggle will toggle another line of options that you can do if you don't see it right away. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this. I'm not going to make any changes. Um, and I want to go to all pages again. And let's say I wanted to edit the filmmakers page. So this page right here. I'll try to find filmmaker. Okay, here it is. I'll click on edit. And this will allow me to edit everything on this particular page. So we can kind of see the layout a little bit. So here it's a split width um, layout where William is on the left and Grant's on the right. That kind of lines up with this part right here. This filmmakers, that's just the name of the, the page. Um, so let's say I wanted to edit Will McKay. Um, either I wanted to edit his name or his bio or the image. I'll click or hover over here and click on this little pencil thing. And this will bring up a pop-up box that will allow me to either change the image. So I just delete the image and I want to add an image. And these are all the various images that we have on the site so far. Um, this may look like there's a double, but there is a difference. This one here is Grant McKay, and that's 600 by 600. And this one's Grant McKay LG, 300 by 300. I think I was doing experiments. Um, you want to use 300 by 300. Let me just click on this again. Set the image on the right hand side here. Um, the name, that's this part right here. So if I want to change name, this is the area I want to edit. And if I want to edit the text, this is the area here. It also has a hyperlink. The hyperlink is this little icon here. And I have it pointing to going to slash William McKay. Um, you can obviously uh, obviously, change the the link to be anything you want. Um, you can go link options to find out what your options are. You can link internally to the different pages that that exist. Um, you want to kind of look for anything that has the extension page, or it could be completely somewhere else. Like for example, Google.com. 
I can have it go there. I also have the option to have it so that if somebody clicks on it, it opens up a new tab. Or if it clicks on or if somebody clicks on it, it just goes to goes to the next page or next URL without opening up a new tab. In any case, I want to keep this as William McKay, so I'm gonna click on that and click on update. I like to, for internal purposes, I'd like to just remove the uh, domain prefixes, but you don't have to do that. I just do that just to keep things clean. In any case, um, that's kind of it. Uh, I'm going to close this. I'm not going to make any changes. Um, what else? Okay, so down here are three images. We can see that over here. So we have single image, single image, single image. Um, let's say I wanted to change this image here. Um, let's say I have a new, new image that I want to swap out with. Well, you would do it here. You'll click on this little pencil icon. And you want to X this out so that you can add a new one in. The image size is 600 by 400. So whatever image that you want to replace this with, make sure it's the same dimension. So 600 width by 400 height and that's in pixel that way it stays consistent uh, with the layout and with the previous image because if the if new image that you're inserting in is bigger it might look awkward or if it's smaller it might look awkward because these two images are supposed to be the same height and width just to make it look conform so that's kind of nice that it tells you that the image you know is 600 by 400 um, so that way you know what to swap it out with to keep things consistent. So that's Filmmaker. Um, that's the other type of pages. Of course, now we can go into Will McKay and Grant McKay's pages and edit those. Grant McKay's page is pretty simple. I think it's just a straight text. So let's go back to all pages. And we should look for a page that says Grant McKay. Uh, there it is, and I'm going to click on edit. So this is what it looks like. And yeah, it's simple text. So on the left hand side with the image, so if I click on the pencil, it'll allow me to change the image. This image needs to be 300 by 300 if you were going to swap out with another image. Now, what's uh, nice about the, the template is that even though this is a circle layout, you would still provide a 300 by 300 square image. The website will automatically make it into a circle, so you don't have to you don't have to make your image a circle. Just you know, in, insert the square image as is. Uh, as long as 300 by 300, it'll look fine. And uh, let me close this. And of course, if you want to edit this side, the right hand side, which is the text. Uh, hover over it, a green box should appear, and you want to click on the pencil. And it's the uh, same interface as before, where it's just text, you can edit it in. Uh, you can drag the right hand corner to kind of give a bigger uh, a bigger view of the the text box you're editing, so that it's not so small, so that, you know, makes things a little bit harder to edit and navigate. So I like to just bring it big if this is what I'm working on. So that's how you edit Grant McKay's page. It's pretty simple. Image on the left, text on the right. Now Williams is a little bit more trickier. So let's check out Williams uh, page. I think towards the top it's similar. We got the image on the left and text on the right. Um, but we also have this little um, split action going here as well as all of uh, this type of functionality which is called an accordion. So let's go back to pages. So under pages, let's go over and edit William McKay and kind of see what the back end admin interface looks like. So the top part is going to be familiar image and text. Down here, not too bad, right? So on the left hand side, there is nothing to the left of these two. So it's empty. Now over here we have the ability to edit uh, these two area uh, and it works the same way. You click on the little pencil in the section that you want to edit it opens in the pop-up box and in here uh, you just edit your text. So let's say area specialization. Let's say there's another another one. So let's say I don't know director for example. 
you just edit it. It creates the bullet point for you. If you are happy with the changes, you click on save changes and then you want to click on update. So every time you make a change, you save it in the pop up box that saves the changes. And to make it show up on the website, because if you just save it and, and you don't click on update, you're saving just a draft. And a draft means it's not live. So by clicking on save, so I clicked on save. If I refresh this page, I'm not going to see director. But once I update, I'm waiting for the spinning icon to stop and refresh. And if I click on refresh now, I will see director. So, and that applies to everything where there's a pop up box. So I'm going to, and the same thing with the reversal. So I'm going to edit the director part out. Okay, and I'll click save changes. And again, if I refresh, nothing's going to happen. Um, you have to click on update to have it, you know, have the changes live. So the director is still there, even though it's gone and I saved the changes. No, I need to also update the website. And if I refresh, director is gone. So let's go over this accordion section here. So the accordion section is not too bad. Uh, as you scroll down, you see a, the back end looks, it, it works similarly to the front end. Uh, you just want to navigate to the accordion block that you want to edit. So let's say I want to ed edit the publish book section. So I'll make, I'll make sure that that's the one that's expanded. And the, in the green box, I will then click on edit. And here I can add another published book. Save and an update. If I wanted it to change this part right here, the actual accordion title, uh, this part right here, not this part because we just talked about that, but just this part right here. That's going to be the one in yellow. So if I edit section, I'll just wait for it. You can see I can change the, the title here. And of course, save changes and update. Adding an accordion is easy as well. I can just add a new section. So I clicked on add section, pops up with a new section. I expand it. The orange allows me to change the tab. And let's say I'll just make it simple. Last section is the title of the tab, and then the content. Let me see if I can highlight the green part. Maybe I have to do this. Click on the plus, and then this is going to be straight text block. So we're going to keep it simple, straight text block. And then the green one appears, and this is the text block. I'm going to just keep the dummy text there. I'm going to save changes, click on update. And then under example work, we're going to see a new block down here. So I'm going to refresh. So we have last section, and it's got the text inside of it. I believe it's also very simple to click and drag the location of each of the blocks. So if I wanted the last section to be right after feature film, I just click and drag, drop it, update. And if I refresh, it should be right after Feature Film, the last section, of course, this part right here. So there you go. Um, I'm seeing that this one's opening by default, and I think there's an option to turn that on and off. So the last section, let me just open it up. It should be under the orange tab. I'm going to click on Edit Section. And I think there's a checkbox option. Let's see. Let's see. Nope. All right, then maybe it's under the text in here. So we open that up. Let me just explore for a second. Perhaps it's because ah, here it is. It's doing a cache thing. So if I if I go straight to the page like a normal person, it should be closed, which is what I want. So that's fine. In any case, um, I I want to delete this text block uh, just because that's dummy content so I want to click on the trash can I'll click on OK to kind of confirm that and then I'm going to update 
and once now that now that I did the update, I'm gonna refresh this page. This last section should be gone. Let's see, did I update? Let's see. Oops, let's click on update. Okay, and let's refresh the website. Yep, so now it's gone. Um, so that's how you edit the pages. So pages applies to home, the filmmaker's uh, main page, and in each of the individual bio pages. Um, so the next thing I wanted to go over is, let's see, the films page. So the films page, um, you know, if you go to all pages, let's say you didn't know it's a special page, so you you go to pages, you're going to all pages, and let's say you went and try to edit, let's see, where is it, films. Well, first off, you, you, can, you couldn't find it because it doesn't exist. Um, but let's say for pr production stills, which does exist exist in pages, you, you find it here. You click on edit. You'll see very quickly that it doesn't make sense to edit under pages because all it has is this little block here, and it has nothing else. Um, you could, oops, you, and then you'll see this next gen gallery that seeing this should trigger. Oh, maybe I need to go here, but we'll go over. We'll go over production stills very shortly. So for now, I wanted to go over the films page, which does not ex exist under pages. The films page, uh, this page um, specifically, is a system created page. It will automatically pull up the six most recent portfolio item. The template calls a portfolio, reutilize portfolio. As films so if I go to portfolio and I click on all projects I should see all the films that this site contains all of it however the top six is what will show up on the you know as, as default there they are in order They're, they are in um, in order of how they are ordered here so D6, and then if I click on next, so that's Crown of Thorns. So number seven should be the PLO. So that should show up number seven here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, if you wanted to change the order, so for example, Billy is the last. Um, it's the last film featured. So if I go to the third page I should see Billy if I wanted Billy to be first um, I would have to first edit Billy and then if I go on the right hand side I would have to then change the publish date because by default the films are ordered by the most recent first so I have taken the hill the most recent and then after that it's this and this and so forth. So if I want Billy to be the first um, in this set, I would have to make it the most recent. So I'm going to use today's date. So today is July 11th. So if I click on, let me just write down what the, uh, what the old date is so that we can make Billy last again. It's not going to be accurate because I don't know what the actual release date of Billy is. Um, so I made a date up to make sure it's always last. So I have it as uh, June 6, 11 at 18.37. Um, the, the hours and time allows me to basically order two films that may be released on the same day. But I wanted to dictate which film on that day shows up before the other one. In any case, um, I want Billy to be the first. So I'm going to make it today's date, um, July 7th. Um, Okay, 11, I think that's today. Perfect. So I'm going to click on OK and I am going to update. So Billy is essentially released today. That's going to be the most recent. So everything's going to shift back and on the first page of the films, I should see Billy. So there you go. 
So Bela shows up. So essentially, it, what I'm trying to say is to change the order of the films, you just have to change the release date of each of the films or the film that you want to change. So I'm going to change this back to June uh, 11, which was what the original setting was and Billy should be last again <clears throat> so I click on update I'm gonna refresh the website and I'm going to go to the third slide I guess and Billy's last and of course um so that's how you change the order um let's say I wanted to edit this uh, Japan film so I see there's an image there's some text and there's a video. So under projects or under portfolio under and then click on all projects. I'm going to bring up all the films. I'm going to navigate to the Japan one where it is. Okay, there it is. I'm going to click on edit. So right now I'm editing the the detail page, this page here as well as other elements of this film. So if I wanted to change the title, let's say instead of a colon, I want to do a dash. I'll change it right here, change it to a dash. I didn't make that change. The text is straightforward. <clears throat> so the text is this part right here. This big image right here, that's set as featured image. It's featuring the image, featuring it first. Um, so to edit that, you know, first I'll remove the featured image. Um, and then I can reset a new featured image. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on J Japan, like the one I already have, because it hasn't changed at all. Um, so I'm going to just set this as featured image. Now, um, you want to, like, just like the, um, the images for the other areas, you want to swap out if you are going to change images or if you are going to create a new film, you want to make sure you're using an image size that is already been set by the template or already been set by other elements so if I wanted to create a new film and I want everything to be conform you know big image like this um, text and video uh, at least for the image I want to make sure the image is the same as everybody else's so to do that if I click on J Japan for example I can see the image dimensions on the right hand side um, and this is telling me that if I was going to replace this image or if I'm going to create a new film and I need a film image, it has to be 1000 by 1030. Um, so, and that's, uh, that's in pixels and that's also a JPEG type. So that's, um, that's a tip that I wanted to let you know. Um, in terms of videos, videos are are pretty straightforward so I'm gonna grab some sort of video okay perfect so I'm gonna pause this Let me see. or didn't play okay perfect all I have to really do is I'm gonna add a couple spaces because I don't want to remove the uh, the Japan one um, if I paste the Vimeo URL it's automatically gonna convert it to this video thing and, and play for me so or uh, it's going to work with WordPress automatically. So I'm going to click on update. Again, all I did was just took the take the URL of the Vimeo uh, website and I just paste the URL into this WYSIWYG here and it automatically converts it to the video to be plain um, when I refresh the page. So there you go. Perfect. And it works well. Perfect. So of course I don't want to make that change permanent. So I'm going to delete that. Remove some spacing. Perfect. Speaking of spacing, luckily I did that. Um, I want to showcase one one extra thing for spacing. All right, so I'm I'm typing along, right? So I'm typing along, and I wanted to do a line break. To do a line break, um, where the cursor is going to be right underneath the next, uh, right underneath the current line, I want to hold down Shift and press Enter, and that will that's a line break. A line break is different than just pressing enter, which is a paragraph break, which is basically a line break, two line breaks, one line break here and one line and one more line break. So as I'm typing, line break is shift enter. That's going to 
that's creating a line break and a paragraph break as I'm typing pressing enter you know is essentially a line break with another one so it creates a paragraph break essentially so just want to point that out click on update just want to double check okay perfect uh, let's edit that a little bit more just want to tighten up the space here <clears throat> hopefully it sticks let's see sometimes WordPress adds their own stuff okay good refresh space should be tightened and that's essentially uh, the film uh, films page as well as each individual film um, so you know if you want to add a new film you know you click on add new up here give it a title give it a description is if there's a video you just grab the URL paste it into this section here set the featured image if you click on publish publish it'll publish on today's date so it automatically will be first in that uh, lineup so it'll automatically show up before this so it's already automated in some sort of fashion so that's that's how you add a film edit the films and reorder how the films show up <clears throat> um, alright so production stills if I go to produ production stills it's essentially a gallery of uh, images that when you click on it provides a nice little pop-up that allows you to kind of you know view all the different images and so forth so to edit the production still like I said it's a gallery you want to go to gallery here and this allows you to add edit and delete images and reorder the images in the gallery so I'm gonna click on gallery and I want to add I want to add images so I want to click on the sec second link here add gallery slash images in, in our case we're trying to add images there's no other gallery to add what I'll do is um, so right here it's asking me upload image it's allowing me to choose a gallery so I'm going to choose the existing one right now which is production stills and let's say I want to add it so I want to upload some new images so let me create an image on the fly alright so I have my images on my de on my desktop um, so let's say let's say this is the image I want to add this one right here and I wanted to upload that all I have to do is grab click on the image and drag it into this little window here so drag the image and it will show up there or I can go the more traditional route and just click on this add file I have a little pop-up and then I can then select oh, image there perfect um, and you can add, you can add like a whole bunch of them I know it's tedious to do you know one at a time so I prefer you know just having a whole bunch of images on my desktop and then just kind of like grab all of them and just drag the whole bunch of them into this box and it'll, it'll automatically line all those images up once I'm set I will then click on start upload which will then proceed to actually upload the image onto the server um, what's nice about the gallery is that it doesn't matter on like all the other sections of the website the dimensions of the um, of the image it's smart enough to crop it correctly at least for the thumbnail um, as you can see a lot of these images once you start opening up they're all various sizes um, you know some are portraits some are landscape some are big some are small different sizes but the the gallery plugin is smart enough to create these little thumbnails all the same size I would try to keep them at least decent size and and uh, yeah at least decent size so that it can you know figure it out correctly and, um, but it's not necessary in any case um, so I'm gonna click on upload to start the uploading process start upload and since it was one image it was really fast so it's pretty good so now it's done now it's uploaded I'm not sure where it's gonna show up maybe it's gonna show up first maybe it shows up last let's see yeah it's gonna show up last so um unlike the film where your most recent it's gonna be the first one featured 
in production still your the one stuff that you just uploaded recently or up, just upload it will show up last kind of makes sense for you know according to the uh you know environment i guess so th these are going to show you know towards the short towards less but let's say i wanted to have this change let's say i wanted to reorder it <clears throat> what i'll do is i'll go to manage uh gallery and it also told you if you want to change the order manage there's a link up there too but i'm gonna click on manage gallery i want to manage the production still gallery and i can see all my images here and I want to click on sort gallery and of course that'll allow you to sort the gallery so I will now grab this image and I can just click and drag uh, let's say I want to have it show up third so click on you know drag and drop it to the third place update the sort order and let me close that tab and now if I refresh it should be on the first page but the third the third um the third slot i guess so there you go this uh beautiful mountain scenery so let's uh i don't want that anymore so i'm going to go back to manage gallery so really simple just you know manage gallery click on production still sort gallery allows you to sort it you drag and drop and I don't want that image anymore. Uh, where is it? Third. So I can just exclude, or just to be much more cleaner, I'll checkbox that checkbox um, and click on delete images. Let's see, delete image, or I could just hover over it and click on delete. Do you want to delete this? Yes. There you go. And then save changes just to make sure it actually deleted and saved it. And if I refresh this uh, page, it should be gone from the third slot. Oh, there you go. Perfect. All right. So that's essentially um, you know, how to edit production stills. Um, under media, media is going to house all your images. And this is a great place to kind of uh, double check to see hmm, if I wanted to edit or if I wanted to add a new film or I want to know essentially what the dimensions, the, si the image sizes of the various images I have in my site, uh, you would want to do it under media. So like for example, um, this is the third slider on the home page. This is the, um, the Billy slider, slide four. So on the home page. So let's say I wanted to change it. I, I have a new a new movie and I don't want to feature um, you know Billy anymore or Army Hammer. I want to feature whatever the new film is, and I, but I want to know what this dimension size is. Um, you go to media, you know, and you look for hmm, this image, the image you're trying to swap out with, and this is telling you that um, your new image should be 1020 by 692. That way, everything stays conform. You know, the slider is not going to grow and shrink depending on the size. It's just going to be consistent. It's going to be smooth. So, media is important. Uh, allows you to kind of know what the dimension size of each of the images are. Uh, even if yeah, even with the logo. So, let's say I have a new logo, um, an updated logo, I, and I want to, ch to change that. Well, I can go, uh, you know, and I can find out what the image size is going to be. Uh, it's going to be 440 by 92. I know it's a JPEG. You know the file format's important as well, and I can easily just swap it out. I can upload a new file to replace the existing one. So if I click on that, <clears throat> um, should be another pop up. I can then choose a file to upload, navigate to my new logo, and just replace the file. It's good, and then click on upload, and now replace the logo. And as long as the image size and the image type's the same. You shouldn't run any issue because essentially you're swapping out just swapping out one image for another. So I just wanted to point out media. It's a good research tool um, as well as allowing you to swap out images as well. 
Um, so the last thing I wanted to go over, which I think is the most challenging part of the site, is the home page slider. Um, currently, a, I believe we have four different types of sliders. Let's see, one, two, three, and four. All right. That's going to be under slider revolution. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then uh, we only have one slider on this website, so it's this one right here. I'm going to click on the pencil to edit the, the slide, the home page slider, of course. And as you can see, we have four different slides, and we can edit each of the four slides um, separately. Um, if I wanted to create a new slide, I could create a one from blank, or you know, one from scratch, um, but it might be easier to maybe just clone an existing one, um, just because it has certain animations. Like let's say I like, let's say I like the Billy animation, like a one liner that pops up from the bottom. All I have to do is hover over, you know, slide four, which is Billy slide, the, the Billy slider or the Billy slide, and I'll duplicate it. Right. Once I duplicate it, um, I can go to slide five. I can click on the pencil, and now that I'm under that mode, I can then change out the image. Of course, we can go to media to find out what the image dimensions are. Make sure we are swapping up within our image. Um, and then let's see. Am I on number five? Let's see. I'm on. I'm not on number five. It looks like I'm number one. So let me click on number five. Make sure this thing's in black, like this thing. Alright, so I am now under number five. Um, I can change the background image. Let's say I want to choose, I know this is going to be bad, but I'm going to choose um, this Japan image. I know it's a totally different size, but so we'll see what happens when you choose an image that's not appropriate. As you can see, you know it's going to look kind of, it's going to get cut, cut off on the sides. Um, and now I'm going to edit the text here. So let's do this. So double click. Oh, here it is. Test. Text. There you go. Good. And I am going to make it the second one as well. Okay. I want to click on this little save slide here. Okay, slide updated. And now if I refresh the page, the second slide should be that new Japan slide I created. So there you go. So because the image is not sized correctly, it still didn't mess up the actual, you know, functionality or anything, but you can see that's really, really zoomed in. Now I've got my test test text there. So let me uh, go ahead and delete that testing slide. Click on OK. And of course, once that's done processing, I want to save it so that we remove the, the test slide. I'll save that. And then I'll refresh the uh, website just to make sure it actually deleted the slide. OK, perfect. Um, and that's essentially it. So let's say I want to edit the first one. I'll click on it to make sure it's um, you know highlighted. Oh, it's already there. Okay, and then um, again the images, uh, the background image, you know, we change here. <coughs> um, each of the texts is also updatable, so you just double click, brings up a little pop up. This is where you change your text, change another text, change another text here. You could add another square box but you'll have to then um, play around with this type of uh, interface where you have to set the timing of when it shows up and all that stuff. This, you know, coming from uh, the video industry, this interface with this timeline type of thing should be somewhat familiar if you use like Premiere, Adobe Premiere should be something similar to that where it allows you to kind of 
do post production video changing stuff. I'm not too familiar, so I kind of kept it simple and kept it um, out of the box. Um, but you can't edit more squares, um, boxes, and then have it kind of um, be the last one coming in. I think this one, how does it work? I think slides from the bottom. Yeah, so you have to edit the timing of that. And, and, and there's a whole bunch of different um, various ways you can ha edit the actions and behaviors and looping and animation. You could have it slide from left and the top. You can have it blurred in or zoom in and all this stuff. This one has a little, unlike this one, the first slide has some sort of like zooming out effect a little bit um, on the background. You can add that in, add that in remove it. How fast it's doing it. Um, there's minor trends. Um, what do they call it transitions between each of the slides. It's like a little flash. You can change that as well. It's it's all under this. And if you're really interested in changing the different animations in between each slide and how the slides are showing up and all this little what not that happens, the uh, the eye candy. Um, just uh, look up tutorials for rev uh, slider revolution, and it can explain you know much better than I can of all the different types of things you can add to it. So that's um that's why that's everything. Uh, I think that covered everything that I wanted to go over. So we uh, went over how to edit pages. You know, for home, it's this part here, as well as the filmmaker's page and each of the individual bios. We went over how to control which films show up when, you know, the order by, you know, changing the the film release date, um, as well as adding each of the individual film description, these pages here. We also went over how to make sure the site, when you're making new changes or swapping in new images to make sure that they line up correctly by making sure that the new images have the same dimension as the old one as well as the same image type. And uh, we also went over production stills which is the gallery. Um, we, we learn how to upload new images as well as we sort the gallery to control where our new images show up because they always show up last. And then finally, we went over the home page slider, how to create a new slide, how to duplicate a slide if we didn't want to go and create a new um, type of slide that has different gimmicks, um, as well as editing the text. We just double click on the text. So we kind of, so that's in a nutshell is how you edit site. Um, so that covers basically everything, everything that you can edit um, from your end. Or from the administrator end. So, thanks for your time.